Last time I posted a blog on this trip, I was right down in northern Germany, having just come up through the Kiel Canal. Well now, I'm in the north end of Denmark, so we've done quite a bit of miles between then and now, and I'm sorry I've not been in touch, but uh, it's been horrible weather, and morale hasn't been too good to be honest, so we've been uh, rather fighting. Uh, we came up through uh, the early islands of Denmark and got up to a place called Clintholm, where we were stuck for three days with a gale of wind right on the nose, 40 knots, just, just hopeless. Then we came out, we got a bit of a break and we came round to Copenhagen, had a good couple of nights in Copenhagen and now we've come up here and we're at Elsinore, at the Sound, the last post for Denmark, for people moving out north into the Kattegat to, to Sweden, to Norway and the rest of the world. And this is a place which is absolutely sopping with history. Behind me is the great fortress of Kronborg, where Hamlet strode the ramparts and, and thought his great thoughts in Shakespeare's mind and made the place famous to all English-speaking people. The sound itself is a place of, well, great interest really. It's a very narrow passage. With guns on either side, there was no way a ship could get through. And the King of Denmark decided he'd raise himself some money back in the 17th century. He was a bit strapped, uh, and he thought what he would do, he had the bright idea of caning every ship that came in here for a 1 or 2% of their cargo value. And this worked fine for a little while until the skippers got wise to it and worked out that they were the sole arbiters of what they'd got on board and they used to cook the books absolutely something rotten and tell them they had nothing of value at all really and they were just bimbling through and the King of Denmark didn't have enough people to be able to get stuck in there and rummage the ships. So he had to believe what he was told, and this was bad news for him. So then he came up with a really bright idea. He said, OK, lads, I'll believe what you're telling me, but here's how it's going to be. I have first refusal on every piece of cargo that comes through this sound. So you put the value on it, and I'll buy it off you. Or maybe I won't, but I've got the option. <laughs> and that put the skippers right on the spot, and they had to tell the truth, because they didn't want to lose their cargo and get ripped off, so that was it. And so it continued for many, many years, for centuries actually. Things changed in the middle of the 19th century when all that was finished, but before then, Nelson and his ships came down here for the Battle of Copenhagen. They came barreling down the Sound, probably with the sort of north wind he've had, the 74s, the first-rate ships of the line, the frigates. You can imagine them, can't you, bowling on down here, down to Copenhagen, 20 miles down that way. And they beat up the Danes some in rotten. The Danes will tell you something else, of course, and maybe they're right. Who am I to say? But uh, anyway, it was a famous event. Well, we're off in the morning, off towards Sweden. The wind is finally going to drop. Everybody says so, so I guess it's true. There's only one problem. The current is ripping down through there now. The current in the Baltic tends to go with the wind. Generally speaking, it runs north out of here because the Baltic gets a fair amount of rain in it and uh, it pours out into the sea. But with this north wind we've had, I'm afraid it's going to be going the other way and guess what? We're going to be butting into what is effectively a head tide, probably all day. <sighs> Nothing to be done. What can't be cured must be endured. So 0400, I'll be off. I'll be out there with Roz, uh, taking it on the chin as always. And with a bit of luck, it'll be a lovely day. And I'll be able to talk to you from the Swedish islands in a couple of days' time. Here's hoping. Wish me luck.